Okay. Welcome back, everybody, to episode two of Sicilian Queens with Lena Messina, the counsellor, Lena Messina, Ooh. and award-winning international Sicilian chef. Ooh. We have the Dr. Lucia Barbera, and she's going to talk to us about I Figli della Roda. Now, I Figli della Roda were not just in one town. There was many, wasn't there? All over Italy and all over Sicily. Mm -hmm. yeah. And but, the Catholic Europe, Europe as well. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. Figli yeah. della Roda are the children of the wheel. And Dr. Lucy Barbera, she's going to talk to us. She's got a beautiful PowerPoint presentation. And she's also written a book, which she will talk to us about the ending of it. Um, I'll just get my glass. Yeah. <laughs> there it is. Yeah. Let me show you in the all'infanzia abbandonata nella Sicilia d'età barbonica, which is the mm -hmm. child care in Sicily in the Bourbon period, um, which is the Bourbon period in the 1800s or 1700s? 17, 1750s to 1850s. But it's about, yeah. yeah, it's about the children that have been abandoned during that period too. Can you put that back up again so we can quickly, where can we buy that from you? Do we uh, it, uh, online um, through Aracne, it's possible to buy that. And if people can't find can that, can they message you? So, pardon? If people can't find that, can they message you to, you can show them? Yeah, what? yeah, yeah, absolutely. No worry. Si, 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 All right, si. so I'm going to hand it to you, Dr. Barbera, and you're going to tell yeah, us. You can email me and... Um, about the PowerPoint presentation, yeah. Yeah. about yeah. the Figli della Roda. Si. Okay. It's in Italian. I haven't written the English That's version right. yet. Someday. It's my mission. <laughs> it's a start. It's a start of the voice to start. And then once the voice, then it gets broader and broader as you grow. Yeah. That's part of the yeah. beautiful world that we live in today. That's right. You're right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So you give us this PowerPoint presentation. So, yeah, um, I'm going to introduce you with um, this uh, huge, very interesting and passionate history. Okay, so can you see? Not mm. yet, so it, well, there we go. Adesso potete okay. vedere? Quindi yeah. um, we are going to talk about i figli della ruota, the children of the wheel, or uh, I, I call them here, i trovatelli siciliani, the Sicilian yeah. foundlings. Yeah. And then I will... Uh, um, share with you why I also call these abandoned children Trovatelli. Um, so mainly what I found in my research is that uh, the Sicilian system at a European level and considering the time at a world level was pioneering in uh, his childcare system. Uh, and uh, I'm going to tell you why. Um, especially in favor of these abandoned children. So Sicily was uh, um, a, a country, because it was a country, the kingdom of Sicily. Two Sicilies. Right. The kingdom of two Sicilies. Yeah, after. Before, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, the kingdom of Sicily and then the kingdom of the two Sicilies um, had in favor of these abandoned children a great public system. Oh. And uh, yeah, because what I was, I was looking during my research, it was not only the history of these children, but also how the institutions worked and the laws um, worked in this case. So okay. you will see how everything was organized. Okay. So let's see if I can move. So here, you can see this picture was taken um, uh, where it was the former Brefotrofi of Messina and uh, you can see here the nuns that were looking in, after the kids in the Brefotrofi of Messina. So there will be an overview of this Brefotrofi and I'm going to explain why we called the orphanages for foundlings Brefotrofi uh, why kids were abandoned, where, uh, how did the foundling wheel turn, and what's the wheel we are talking about, yeah. how many children 
and uh, how the child um, child abandon worked and uh, how it worked the child care in Sicily and who is the La Ruotara, a very important character in this uh, uh, social phenomenon. And then uh, what was the language of the abandonment, the signals parents left with children and uh, the, um, the last names and names given to these children, how things work. Yeah, because um, they, they were given an, a, a name. They were, yeah. yeah, they were given a name by the institution. Yeah. And we will discover what was going on in Sicily in general and in Messina. I can yeah. tell you because I did my research looking in the registers for children of Messina. And then uh, some final consideration because the past comes back, as uh, we know. And there is something going on in Italy. And also when I arrived in Australia, there was also a discussion here in Australia about uh, abandoned children. When in 2015, some children were found abandoned in New South Wales. Yeah, so there was that, kind yeah. of discussion and I was just arrived oh. and I said, oh my God, <laughs> they follow you everywhere. <laughs> Oh, really? It was shocking. And no one baby, but two after a few days. It I was shocking. That. I said, how come in Australia we talk about that? And it was just mm. <laughs> incredible. incredible. That was another sign. Me. Yeah, another sign. Because then the, New South, uh, South, the government of New South Wales was looking at this medieval system of the wheel <laughs> I'm talking about. Yeah. Uh, the new system that now is spreading in Europe to just adopt this here in Australia as well. Oh my it's God. Incredible. Yeah. <laughs> and I was just arrived in Australia and there were these cases and oh my I remember God. that time. Yeah. 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 Mm. Okay, let's go on to the next. Okay, so here we are. Brefo Trophy. Lina was asking about this word. So um, the word is a combination of many words we know in English, in Italian, of uh, Greek and sometimes Latin. But brefotrofio comes from the Greek, brefos, newborn, and trefo, to feed. So brefotrofio was the place where newborn babies were fed and uh, were abandoned. And that is a kind of orphanage, as I told you before, for newborn babies. So what and year was it? What year was this one that, that this found, this um this institution? Do you... These institutions were yeah. uh, originally in the medieval time uh, mainly religious. Okay. So nuns were um, the ones looking after these babies, and uh, they were just a kind of religious institutions. But then they became became public. So it was in the, was it in the late 1800s? In the, the yes, middle, yes, middle, in the yes. Middle, in, the yes. Middle, in, the in Sicily, everything started at a public level uh, in the um, mid of the 18th century. Okay. And, and it was pioneering at a European level, as I told you before. But if we think that, uh, yeah, Kingdom of Sicily was in Europe, was a European country. We can talk about this kind of system pioneering at a world uh, level. Yeah. Because of the time. Yes, yeah. absolutely. And then I'm showing you the documents, the laws, and everything. Yeah. Anyway, so Breakfast Trophy were assistential institutions um, set up for hosting bambini esposti. Esposti. So were exposed children, figli di gnoti, children of unknown parents, abandoned from their parents. Yeah. And uh, keep in mind these di gnoti, because it's going to be very interesting when we are going to talk about last names given to the abandoned children. Okay. So... Um, these kind of institutions for newborn uh, baby in Italy, uh, actually, you can see here how old they were. So we have in uh, 787 in Milan, yep. we had the first one. And then uh, once again in Milan, 
nel 1158-1158. Then what was the main promoter? Uh, Pope Innocent III that founded the Ospedale di Santo Spirito in Sassia. So these brefotrophy um, actually were kind of hospitals okay. hosting these babies. Yeah. Mm? Yeah. Called the brefotrophy then. So we have in Florence one of the most important European uh, um, brefotrophy, which is uh, now in place. It's a very important monument and place to go, Ospedali degli Innocenti, there is a very interesting museum, uh, e degli Innocenti, once again, keep in mind, because Innocenti was also a last name given to these children yeah. abandoned in Florence. Yeah. Um, 16th century. Can I, can I, excuse me. Yeah. Um, is there any correlation between pop Pope Innocenti and Innocenti, figli delle di... Is there no, 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 no. Innocenti comes from the Bible, a piece okay. of the Bible okay. where there was La Strage degli Innocenti. Okay. No, but Innocenti then became the last name given to these children because the hospital, Brefotrofio, was Ospedale degli Innocenti. And oh. I'm going to share with you what was the kind of phenomenon organized for giving the last names to these children yeah. but florence at a european level uh, we can also go and visit nowadays there is a huge very important interesting museum yeah. and uh, it, it's still in place and uh, on the other hand ospedale degli innocenti has been looking and it's looking after children in need still nowadays oh. so oh. Uh, and it's a very beautiful monument because uh, Brunelleschi um, really was the architect of this beautiful monument. It's amazing to go and visit this uh, Ospedale degli Innocenti. But on the other hand, it's also incredible to go and visit, uh, uh, like I did, in Naples, La Real Casa dell'Annunziata, where... Yeah. Um, I'm going to share with you something about this important institution which was um, built in the 16th century. So in the Renaissance time, then in Paris. So everything spread in Europe as well. Parigi, Maison de la Couche, uh, which was the biggest brefotrophy in France in that period. And then in London, we have the Foundling Hospital in uh, uh, towards the uh, end, uh, mid of the uh, 17th, 18th century. So now why a lot of babies, I was telling before in the Catholic Europe and then Italy, Italy yeah. as a Catholic uh, country and then uh, Sicily, which is our um, uh, country and region, uh, then uh, uh, we are looking for uh, more information about that. So causes, disgrace, uh, this honor uh, when uh, the origin of these children were ille illegitimate. So relationships between unwed women yeah. and the noble uh, people of the little village or unwed women and priests. Uh, in my documents, priests? yeah, I found some <laughs> cases oh, yeah. related to this. Um, um, I, I could say something, but I won't. <laughs> anyway. There were many cases uh, where the, um, the illegitimate uh, um, children were abandoned because uh, children of uh, unwed women. So to save the uh, honor of these uh, girls, they were obliged and covered by also uh, the, um, the church to yeah. abandon these children. was uh, a kind of... Uh, system also protected by the church as but well. how does a woman how did they expect a woman not to reveal that she was pregnant during that time was she locked away everything in the house? was covered everything um she for example from a little village um, of the countryside she was uh, all of a sudden sent to find the auntie living uh, far away. Okay, all right. Yeah. Okay. So everybody yeah. knew. Everybody knew why she was in a way. In yeah, a in, a, way. in a way. Yeah, and uh, most of the time it was, you know, during the period of the pregnancy, um, in order for the the girl to give birth, abandon these children where there were the. 
specialized institution and then coming back. So you I see, this was the, world what well, this was world spread because yeah, yeah. we knew about that in England. We we know like we watched the English movies and where you know the well known uh, Duke or whatever have sex with the, the state, and then she had to go away and get sent to the country, and then came back. And who knows what happened to the child? But we'd never ever heard of it happening in our own country. Hey, it happened on Game of Thrones. Uh, it happened on Game of Thrones. <laughs> absolutely. Carmela yeah. and Lina, yeah. this kind of um, phenomenon was huge. If I tell you huge, it was incredible. Um, it's kind of uh, something normal. Yeah. It's a normal, it was a normal practice uh, back then, but who would adopt because them? of poverty? Who would adopt also, them? Who would adopt them though? They they necessarily weren't adopted. They were not, wait, yeah. oh wait, wait! I'm gonna I'm tell you. I'm impatient. I'm gonna I'm tell impatient. you. It was just a kind of really very popular phenomenon, yeah. and um, protected by the church, and then uh, it became also uh, protected by the public system. Yeah. Okay. All right, so poverty and hunger. Parents sometimes were unable to feed their children during nursing, so they abandoned these children to the hospitals um, called the Brefodrofi um, of the city, for example. And uh, I, I will tell you that uh, I was looking the documents for Messina, but in the meantime, when I was doing my research in Palermo, I was looking also to the public system, which was in place in the 18th century, the Bourbon period. So I read the, the royal papers um, oh, from everywhere in oh Sicily. They oh, arrived God. to Palermo. And uh, if there was something that I read about uh, Messina was that even children from Calabria were carried by some people who did kind of this job to carry children to Messina because Messina had the institution in yes. place for these children. Yes. So from Calabria back then, some uh, people were paid to carry abandoned children in Messina, crossing the straits. But then what I read was the, the sad story that people got the money and uh, uh, threw the children in the Strait of Messina. Oh. So there was the, this kind of uh, uh, public denounce yeah. that um, um, uh, people were frauding the system doing this. Yeah, but yeah. it depends on, you know, you can look at it in so many ways that they were too desperate because desperate people do desperate things. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. No. From, uh, for example, from the countryside, I read that there were uh, women doing this kind of job, you know, the children carrier yeah. to, the, um, to the places where there was the will, yeah. which were not only cities, every little village had uh, this kind of a shelter, which was the will. Yes. And someone looking after the wheel right. in correct. many, many villages. Yeah. If there was something, was the wheel as a social service, you know, yeah. Yeah. Uh, the, the way which and we it, can consider these and, days. And is there a lot of wheels that you can actually see when you go to the Città della Sicilia? Uh, For example, if you want to go in a small city, there are still some. I'm going to tell you that uh, nowadays the, they cannot be found so easily because they were uh, just closed yeah. Um, yeah. during uh, Mussolini time. Okay. I'm going to tell you why okay. oh, and sorry. what happened. Oh, sorry. But there are wheels still in place we can visit, for example, in Firenze in um, Naples okay. and uh, I'm going to show you something also in okay. picture. Okay, so other reasons. What I found in the documents is that, for example, uh, uh, there were sick babies uh, and because of this, yeah. people uh, didn't know how to look after them or uh, the mother was sick and they abandoned the children. Oh Sometimes I read that because children uh, uh, who were born were just um, like looking like monsters yeah they were thinking they were just uh, the uh, the children of the devil so for this reason they abandoned yeah instead of killing them 
they abandoned these babies because they had kind of uh, handicaps. Yeah, they so were they deformed. Were how, yeah. They were deformed. Yeah. The fault, yeah. And because of this, they abandoned. Or, oh, for example, in the documents, I found that the mothers abandoned their children because the, the um, husband was in prison or far away. They didn't know how to feed this baby, to look after him. So they preferred to keep the baby alive, to abandon the, their children. Mm -hmm. um, for example, I read that some fathers abandoned their children because the mother died during uh, childbirth. Oh, yeah. So there were many cases uh, in this case for children to be abandoned by their fathers. Uh, and then because of the poverty, wars and the outbreaks. Yeah. So mainly the causes were this. Um, so the places where um, kids were abandoned, you know, we can see many movies on the street, on a doorstep, uh, um, near the churches. Yeah. Uh, then uh, we had the foundling hospitals which now we know are called or were called Brefotrophy. Um, and then uh, we had the, the spread of the convenience office. So there were midwives um, that delivered children when they were born at home or in maternity units, where some rooms were for the partorienti velate belled laboring women as i told you before and this is something i found in the documents uh, i conducted my research on so there was the ospedale uh, di messina who had a specific maternity unit uh, made up uh, just specific for um, girls that gave birth but they were covered yeah just Keep their um, la loro uh, anonymity, and uh, in this case, uh, we know that uh, as uh, we were talking before, for for example, from the countryside, from a village, they were giving birth, but uh, uh, unwed girls. So, so the from... child, the, the the lady that was giving birth, she was covered. Yes. Yeah, the documents talked about these maternity units where the, the, the women, the girls, were covered. La loro faccia era coperta. So you don't They're know not, uh, I no, their identity. No, uh, not to still, know yeah. their identity. So there was a specific maternity unit. So some rooms of the maternity unit were for partorienti velate. This is exactly the uh, words I found in the documents, Sicilian documents. Veiled so, laboring women. So where a woman today birth and, and the, 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 as Lena's daughter's just given birth, yeah. and she's got a grandson. Can you imagine if we were put in that situation where you could, the, the, the very fact of giving birth to a child is the most epic moment of any woman's life. Mm. This and, I, and, and I guess I guess it does two things, doesn't it? The veil it keeps the identity of the young woman sacred, but it also and safe. And safe but it also it creates that environment for her. But it also gives her the disassociation to the child, does it not? Yeah. So when yeah. the child is born, she feels and goes through the labour, but she won't see the child. So it probably acts as a barrier for her, that safety zone, but also as a, as a disassociation, I guess, not to see the child. I can't imagine, I, I'm listening to all this and my skin, I feel like crying. No. It, because it's not our world. No. And we're not used to this world. But the fact that this world only existed, you know, in the 1700s and the 1800s. But Lena, it's coming back. I know, Even I saw, in this I saw, that, know, I saw in that word, epidemic, pandemic, which is what we're going Everything, yeah. And there's always it. pockets. There's always, there's always pockets in life, as Dr. Lucia said. It's coming back. There are corners of the world where this is happening still. It's not just, you know. 
it, there are pockets. But for, di but for, different, but for different reasons. Now we yeah. have mothers, you know, for economically, we don't know what's going to happen. And I don't, want to, I don't want to talk about that or harp on that, what's going to happen at the end of COVID-19, because we are going through an epidemic pandemic. Mm -hmm. But also mm -hmm. you've got drugs. Yeah, that's another area today, and and we don't know the mindset of a of a woman who's pregnant, who, um, you know, is, is about to give birth or wants to give birth, and is so desperate. But they sacrifice their own life yeah. to give their child a better way of life. Isn't that what our like? That's what my grandmother did in a different way. She gave. She sacrificed her life to say goodbye to her children to go to another world. Now, that That's is a way it's, it's similar, it's similar but it's a different scenario. It's yeah. not giving up. It just, she gave, although she gave birth to her child, she gave her child away to enter another world, another realm yeah. for the destiny of that family. Sorry, I'm yeah. sorry, I can't. Sorry. Yeah. No, 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 that's it, yeah. That's what they did. Yeah. In yeah. a different in a different way. One yeah. gives birth to it, one says goodbye, I'm letting you go, go and find your And you know, food. you know that you are blessed to be here because he was alive. So there was someone looking after in a good way. You know how many kids died? Woo! Thousands of thousands. Oh. Like uh, like uh, mosquitoes, uh, like uh, ma proprio tu, quasi tutti morivano. E there was a high. Sì, era, uh, se era il tempo dell'inverno, tu ti puoi immaginare inverno, freddo là nella Sicilia, in Italia. Ah, messi là abbandonati, cioè, ma veramente, so, abbandoni so, in that kind of system uh, al, al freddo, al gelo. Tra le within a couple of hours. You know, I read uh, of stories of children uh, abandoned abandon in the streets eaten by the pigs you know oh. it was because you know we are talking about uh, a time where everything was so rural was so um, it was raw we were and they were uneducated they were they were they were based a lot animals of and people living together yeah. in the streets all together so, so, so i'm a, I'm a veiled woman giving birth what happens next lucia what happens next okay so all oh, Oh, uh, a place where then uh, kids were abandoned uh, was the foundling wheel. What's this wheel? So, and uh, how this, uh, did uh, the foundling wheel turn? What I told you before, in Rome, thanks to Pope Innocenzo III, we had the first foundling wheel founded by this Pope. Why? Because he was just impressed that many children were found uh, flo floating yes. in the Tiber River. So oh. fishermen oh. went to, to get fishes instead found the babies sometimes. Yeah. So because it was a very huge phenomenon, so people got rid of these babies sometimes. Come succedeva in Messina, as I told you, in the Messina Strait, a lot of people from yeah. Calabria. Yeah. And uh, that, okay, that, so that's what happened in Rome. So in Italy, we had this kind of system uh, in uh, the 12th century, and then other names uh, for la ruota, which is the wheel, uh, are rota, torno, tornio, buca, presepio, pila, scaffa, curlo. Many ways of calling this kind of a system um, in Italy. So how? Uh, it worked and uh, how um, we can found this uh, wheel. It was a wood cylinder set up right in the outside wall of the building, as you can see written there, rather like a revolving window where the baby was placed. Very similar. Uh, prima Lina, before Lina was asking, can we find this kind of uh, wheels uh, in Sicily? You know where uh, you can find similar stuff? Um, in the old uh, conventi, convents yeah, convents, yeah. of, uh, um, come si chiamano le suore di clausura? The sisters of Saint Clara? No, the, Suori. the um, sisters, the nuns we, who couldn't go out. Cloister nuns? I've never, I've never closet nun? The, the, the le suore nuns. di clausura? The convent nuns, so weren't allowed to go out at all? Yeah, those type 
of nuns that couldn't go out at all. They lived in the convent completely. I'll have, I'll have a look. You, you continue. And I'll so have a look. Yeah. if you go to Sicily, there are some places still. Oh, yeah. Fascinating. Yeah. These ancient convents. You know, very popular in Sicily because the um, dolci, the Sicilian sweets, were mainly popular because of these nuns. Okay, so they... let me just stop there. Maria Grammatico from Erishi, she was yeah. in the convent in Erishi and she was yeah. taught by the nuns and she was there and the nuns taught them about, taught her how to make a maturana. Brava! This kind, yes, so tutte le suore di siciliane avevano una ruota, quelle che non uscivano fuori, sì. le suore di clausura, the cloister nuns, I think. Sì. Okay, you can find in these places so fascinating, the wheels, very similar, because they were used to sell the uh, sweets to people. Sweet, yeah. Eh, I dolci della Martorana, tutti questi dolci siciliani più particolari sono quelli delle suore di clausura. Sì, sì. sì. Questi dolci particolari. Sai che cosa? Se ti interessa, mi sono, sono stata a Palermo ora a Natale, sono andata nel convento di clausura perché io ho dormito in questi posti. Ma... I was one of the last blessed people to know these nuns. Oh my God! That would have been amazing. Quindi c'ho il libro che possiamo fare i dolci, tesoro mio. Sì, io c'ho il libro di Maria, lei mi ha dato. Il libro e io lei... ce l'ho di queste suore di Palermo. Lei, no. lei, ci, ha rubato, lei ci ha rubato tutte le ricette. <ride> sotto sotto, sotto tasco, tu mi dici. Poi, poi te lo mostro, è un libro preziosissimo. Adesso le suore di Palermo di Clausura sono morte e, e poi adesso è pubblico. It's so touching to go there. And I was blessed because I slept and I knew the, the major nun in this oh. convent. Oh my God. That's Ora sono tutte morte, sì. Ma guarda, incredible. And always because of this research. How many things? See, so many doors opened up because so many people wanted you to, to, to say, Mamma tell the story. Mia. To Mamma tell mia. the story. Wow. Incredible. Wow. So, if you want do, to record... Do you want to go to the next one and we might stop and then start another one? Or you, how, what do you think? Yeah, we, I can go through quick, you know. Yeah, let's yeah. go through quickly because there's so many things we've got to talk about. Yeah, no. Yeah, but Yeah, good thing. Yeah. All right. Can Tell me when you're going to record. No, no, we're, no, 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 we're going. Keep going. We, we, we keep going. Keep going. Okay. Okay. So, um, the person uh, who was uh, in charge of the ruota was called the ruotara um, and uh, or ricevitrice dei proietti, according to the um, Sicilian documents, pious receiver of castoffs. And that person rotated the wheel and pulled a cord on the outside. So yes. the person abandoned, abandoning the children, uh, the children was pulling the cord uh, from outside in order to uh, cause an internal bell and uh, alert the ruotaria, uh, ruotara, who was a caretaker of these children. Like, like, like you know, come... Dinner is ready. Put it See? on the wheel of serving your dinner. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. On the other hand, this person from the inside of, um, of the building rotated this cylinder and uh, just uh, um, received the baby, welcomed okay. the baby inside the uh, Brefotrofio. Uh, inside, you know, the Brefotrofio were mainly spread in the cities, but as I told you, in uh, little villages, we had a kind of uh, a small house with the, just the wheel and uh, a ruotara doing this as a job, paid by the public system, the council. My God. I don't think I'll put that in the budget. Uh -huh. <laughs> I don't think I'll put that in the budget next week. <laughs> Sorry. <It's> <laughs> yeah, I'll tell you later. <laughs> 
Di che parla adesso? Ha detto forse il cazzo. Il cazzo. Allora io faccio la Madonna. <ride> <ride> è tanto ok facciamo un'altra pagina <ride> ok so it's incredible that in the first half of the 19th century Italy had 1200 foundling wheels wow God. so everywhere even the most tiny village every had, little town every little village yeah, had and mainly And men, you know, these women called the ruotare could be also midwives. Yeah. So, uh, if you want to know about these, um, um, the numbers, 10 million children were abandoned in the, um, at the end of the 18th century, and the maximum level of the social phenomenon was in the 19th century. So the 19th century in Italy is called the uh, century of foundling because the number was very, very high. And uh, more common in the cities than in the countryside, the numbers. Because from the countryside, people moved to keep the, you know, the secret to the yeah. cities. Yeah. That is why mainly. So, um, I told you at the beginning that uh, firstly, uh, religious institutions were looking after these uh, newborn babies abandoned by the um, parents, but then there was uh, a public and uh, uh, assistential system. Sicily, that is the main thing uh, that I could discover about Sicily, had a pioneering role at a European level, And as I told you, because of the time, we can say worldwide. Yeah. Because from the 1751, we had a public uh, uh, law, um, legal system for foundling and the creation of a public child, child care system. And uh, we had in Palermo, like a kind of uh, commission uh, made up of... Uh, um, one uh, very important uh, priest and four nobles. So they were the uh, most important uh, carer at a public level um, of the abandoned children, the ones who um, decided the laws yeah. and what was going on in Sicily in every little uh, tiny village. So we had the foundation of la deputazione dei bambini proietti. So the deputation, like a commission, yeah. just for the abandoned children. And look, in Sicily, in the documents, P, uh, children who were abandoned were called the proietti, which proietti. derives from uh, Latin and uh, uh, from the, the verb proicere, which means like uh, um, put out, yeah. oh. like proiettile, you know, the, uh, the proiettile, the one you put in the, in the gun, because, But, yeah, yeah, and yettili, it means what, yettili, yettili, yettili. buttare fuori, buttare fuori, yettili fuori, yettili fuori, yettili fuori yeah? that's right, wow. yeah, yeah. Well, that's a good connection, yeah, yeah. that's right, proietti, so to put out, yettili, to throw out, yeah. yettili, throw out. Yettili. Yeah, that's what, that's what it would mean, yeah. So we had this uh, regional commission, national commission because of the time in Palermo, and uh, I conducted my research mainly there, so I could see all these public documents belonging to this uh, Deputazione dei Bambini Proietti. This is why I know what happened in Sicily, in general, in every tiny village, oh because this Deputazione dei Proietti received any message from uh, any part of Sicily, sending oh, okay. to Palermo, to them. So it's kind of the government. That's a government, yeah, there's yeah, a government the, section. The, the government like, section. Like, um, you know, a special department of human services. Yeah, so, at a national level. Thank, and then we had... The, at a national level. Yeah, not, because, not, because Sicily was a national. Oh, okay, yeah, 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 that's right, yes. yes so right. can you imagine the, the, the country's um, condition and how they were going to get this fixed up how could they fix this situation and this is how they this is what they came up with they came up with a system that's why it's called the a child, public system a public child care system and of the children yeah um that fitted in there and everything had to be registered through palermo 
Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, you know, the, there was this uh, national commission, and think that uh, it was made up by princes and uh, nobles, Sicilian yeah. nobles. Oh, and imagine. So, uh, a few skeletons in their closet. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Um, a common interest between the church and the public and the, you know, the, yeah. the novels. Yeah. Collaboration. Everyone, yes. A collaboration. So, a collaboration. Everyone was interested to just control yeah. and uh, legalize um, and monitor this kind of phenomenon in a different and more organized way. So that is the main thing that happened in Sicily. For the first time, back then in 1751 should there was this kind of uh, should we stop it there and start a new uh, start a new video Carmela? i think that's because otherwise it'll be too long all right um do you want to just uh stop that that um yeah just stop it there and we can reduce it so that it just stops at that particular otherwise it'll be too long yeah oh well then you wanted to stop the powerpoint presentation so i can say no, Oh, can we stop the PowerPoint presentation? Respect. Okay. Wow. All right. Wow. It's going to be more interesting after. I oh, know. It's already 9.30. Is that all right with you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm fine. I just need to... Because take I, a little, a little I won't coffee. be able to come in again yeah you know? i'm gonna have a five minute break just go to the binet see okay, okay. yeah um this is, the coffee. this is huge this is huge well right. thank you very much everybody we'll just stop this this episode um and we'll go to the next episode and talk much more uh <laughs> i thought you were already said that i thought you already said that i haven't called i hadn't finished <laughs> talking <laughs> <laughs> you, you need to shorten that. You are not putting that online. You are not putting we that are online. Yeah. No, yeah. You are not putting yeah. that yeah. online. I'm not. You're not. Sit down, and sit down and we'll say goodbye to everybody and we'll see you no. in the next episode, everybody. You are not putting that online, young Ciao. lady. Next episode, <laughs> everybody. Ciao. Ciao. <laughs> Ciao. Grazie. You are not putting